to be honest, I'm very pissed right now. I am not a saint. I'm not an angel. I'm not someone who grew up with the habit of donating money. And I feel like I have been cheated and lied to the first time I decide to donate all of my income, all of my revenue um, in a month. And so in this episode, I don't even know if I'm gonna post it, but I want to open up to what really happened after I donated more than 100%, more like 200% of what I earned in a month. Um, revenue, top line, not bottom line, which means I also have to pay for all the business expenses out of pocket. And so this is definitely a financial hit to me. So here's a story. I saw a GoFundMe campaign on someone's story and that person was a long time follower. She and I, we exchanged a couple messages over the years and I learned that her father passed away and she needs to pay for the funeral in which I was like okay so um, your father needs a funeral I have savings I will help you pay for it and so in total I paid like I think $560 which is like not a small amount of money like to me it's not a small amount of money I don't know in what world is like a small amount of money and so you know that's the amount of money I contributed and I didn't want anything in return I just you know, wish her well. I wish she can use this money to pay for her father's um, funeral because that is something that, you know, it's pretty uh, devastating. And I want to say a couple weeks later, she reached out to me and she's like, she wants to work together. So I was honestly quite taken aback because I was like, wait, like you needed a GoFundMe, but now you want to work together. And of course, like my coaching services, they're not free, <laughs> right? I do a lot of free things, but coaching just takes a lot of time and energy and I just can't do it for free. And so um, she knows that. She also hired coaches before. And so we hopped on a call. And on the call, I learned that um, contrary to what I initially believed, she's not in a bad financial situation. At least from what I heard, she's not. Like she has a well-paying job and I don't want to get into the specifics, but she makes like top 10% of the US, like at least top 10%. And for her age group, maybe it's like and even like higher up in the percentile. And um, she makes really good money. She has multiple investment accounts, and one of which is being managed by a wealth management company who takes out 1% of the portfolio. And you probably know that like a lot of these wealth management companies, they don't work with you unless you already have money. They don't work with you unless you already have the um, ability to have investments. And so her impression, like the initial, like the impression that she gave me was, She's in deep financial shit and she really needs help. She literally has no money. She used all her means. She borrowed money everywhere. And her last resort is GoFundMe. That was my impression. And, you know, I could be wrong. This could be like a total like miscommunication. I don't know. But I was under the impression that you don't use GoFundMe to just like fund for things when you actually do have the money. But after learning about her financial situation, I was shocked. And it took me, honestly, it took me two days to think about this because I really want to think of her in a good way, right? She's a longtime follower. Uh, we exchanged DMs and we talked about various things. And like, obviously I respect her and I like her to an extent for me to donate like almost 600 bucks to her, like randomly. Like we're not even like friends. We haven't met up in person. All we did was DM a couple of times. And so I must like her to a certain extent to help her out in this situation, even though I don't really know her all that much. But after learning about the behind the scenes of her actual financial situation, like I was honestly like so shocked that I couldn't even respond to it until like two days later. You know, I thought about it. I journaled about it. I um, talked to my husband about it. And uh, it took me a lot of reflecting to realize what happened, which is, it's not that she doesn't have the money, but she doesn't want to use her money to pay for her own father's funeral and she'd rather start a GoFundMe. And essentially, indirectly, she's taking money from those who are more in need. Because you know what? For someone to know this behind the scenes, like to, to know that, hey, there are people who are just like using GoFundMe as a way to get quick cash instead of selling their own investments, you know, it makes people second guess whether they should donate money in the future. Because this leaves a really bad taste in my mouth. And to be honest, like, She's making so much more money than me. This year, I made like negative money. I'm just paying my staff. I am just incurring all these business expenses and still donating. Like I'm making negative money. I'm not in like a, you know, like there's so much financial abundance. I will just like, you know, donate a part of my income. No, I have zero income and I also have lots of expenses. I have to pay my team. I have to pay for software, all these things to support my students. And of course, these are all my toys. Like donating is my toys, not making money is my toys. But at the same time, it just feels so 
bad. <laughs> I don't know what other word I can say about it. Like, it just feels so incongruent that I just feel so lied to that she would just like use a GoFundMe even though she has other means of gathering money, but she's just like unwilling to borrow money. She's unwilling to have credit card debt. She's unwilling to sell her investments. And it just like blows my mind. And I feel like Nowadays, I don't want every single one of my episodes to be like, oh, there's a take-home story because I'm such a saint now because I know everything because I'm your guru. Because to be honest, I'm not perfect and I don't know everything. And there are a lot of things that still boggles my mind, including this one, which happened super recently. And I'm still digesting it. It still feels really unfair. And this brought back so many memories because growing up, I've always been the type of person who like finishes everything first. And in group projects, because I finish my own homework, like other homeworks first, I always have to do more work because apparently other people don't have such capacity. So even though we're in a group project and we get the same grade, I always end up doing way more work than a lot of the other group members. And, you know, even in a workplace setting, after I finish my workload, I'm always assigned with more work. So it always feels like I'm being punished for doing good work. And this time, again, it feels like I'm being f punished for donating all my revenue. So it really feels really shitty. <laughs> and of course, the logical side of me is like, oh, this is like, um, you know, a one-time thing. And you don't want to let this prevent you from donating in the future. But of course, I'm also human. And so a part of me is like, well, this is a sign. <laughs> This is a sign that um, you should stop being so generous and donating all your money without really understanding the situation in which you can't really understand the situation because people can still lie to you. And so in that case, like there's really no winning in here unless you just like never donate at all. And which like, obviously I don't want that. I don't want to become this like bitter person who like never donates money because she got burned once. But the truth is I've been burned many, many times in my life. And this is just like another, I want to say cherry on top, but in a bad way. And I just feel so extremely cheated and betrayed and lied to. And I'm still trying to process this whole thing. And there's just so much emotion in, in here. And of course, there's also resentment. And um, you might wonder, like, did we end up working together? No. Um, she actually sent me a message saying that she doesn't have the money for it, which I know is total BS because she actually has investments and she just decided not to dip into investments, um, not for her father's funeral and not for us working together. But even if she did not send me that message, I was going to send her that. I just don't think this is the right time to work together. And is this like even about timing? I don't know because right now I really question her character and I don't want to work with anyone who has questionable character. And maybe there's really something that I don't know about. Maybe like all her investments are like frozen and she can't use it but like we all know you can borrow against your 401k you can borrow against your retirement accounts like when there's a will there's a way and from what i know she's totally debt free and she's just basically like unwilling to liquidate her investments her assets to uh, pay for her own father's funeral which baffles me and uh, i just honestly don't feel good about working with her and so i was going to send her a message anyway but then i saw her message before i sent her that message so yeah in two days after so much reflecting i decided that you know i want to say no to this you know uh opportunity to work together and i'm gonna say no to uh, five figures of working together which is like the amount of money that she was going to pay me because i just don't have a good feeling about this and was it hard yes it was hard because like I told you, there's a part of me that likes her and um, I can see how I can help her in a lot of ways. And I can also see like, where's the disconnect? Like, why isn't she retired from corporate? Why is she feeling a certain way about her job? But another part of me, of course, also feels very betrayed and lied to and taken for granted. And there's one thing that she mentioned in our conversation together. She was like, $500 is probably not a lot of money to you, but... Um, it's a lot of money to us. And in my mind, I was just like, in what world is $500 not a lot of money? Like, I don't know. $500 is like a car payment for a really fancy car, like a BMW, like some kind of sports car model. That's how much you pay for a month. $500 can be utility money for many, many months. And like, even though I used to buy designer handbags, that used to be my spending habit. I think it's also pretty apparent that nowadays I don't do that anymore because that's not how I operate. I don't think $500 is like little money, not before, not now. 
And if anything, now I treasure money even more because I've made the decision that I'm gonna intentionally leave money on the table and I'm gonna intentionally donate all my money. So like, you know, it, it just really rubs me in the wrong way and maybe she doesn't mean it in a bad way. And I really wanna think that, you know, I, I really wanna view human beings with, with a good lens, <laughs> through a good lens. I, I really wanna think of everyone under a good light, but sometimes it's really hard. And times like that, I just feel so misleaded um, misguided. I don't even know the words for it. And um, today is one of those days that I'm just trying to pull myself back up. And you probably know that I have been diagnosed with clinical depression. And I like to describe it as like, this is something that I have, not something that I am. So I don't like to say that I'm depressed, but I like to say that I have depression because there, there's just like a certain level of um, separation so that I'm not necessarily defined by my mental illnesses. But that is true. I do have depression and moments like this really trigger it. It really makes me question my sanity and think that, am I stupid for buying into this? Am I stupid for donating money? And of course, the logical answer is like, no, Cherry, you're not stupid. Like people can just lie and cheat and it's not your fault that they do that. But I think there's definitely a part of me that's like, dang, like that's not cool. So with that being said, that is the end of the story. I don't have a greater lesson in this episode. And I just want to share my transparent journey of me donating money. You know, a part of me was also like, oh, it's like, you know, 600 bucks. And maybe a part of me is also like embarrassed that this is how much I make, even though in the past I made so much more. But again, like making money is not my priority and I'm learning to be okay with it. And so if you're listening to this and you're like 600 bucks is not a lot of money just know that this is actually more than what i made that month and you know minus expenses i'm like a couple of thousand dollars in red and so um that's my current financial situation and to be honest some days i feel lost some days i'm like do i really want to sustain this business because the number one rule for business as i learned in business school is to make money and right now this year i have not made any money and i've just been in the red all the time because i just don't feel congruent selling something that just does not feel like the right time to sell and i do have my signature program early retirement academy but i haven't enrolled anyone since I think January um, so that that's you know the whole situation and there have been people who express that they want to work with me and I just said it's not ready right now it's not open right now because to be honest I just don't feel like this is the right time and I want to stop doing things that does not feel congruent and I think there are many many things I still need to discover on my own um, before trying to teach anyone because I don't want to teach anything prematurely just like how I don't recommend anyone to invest prematurely um, just like in my other video I was like if you currently already have a money problem if you currently don't already have enough spending money then stop trying to invest because invest like investing your money that's not a magic pill that doesn't solve everything and so um yeah don't do that <laughs> Yes, there's my ADHD brain just going to different directions and finding connections and trying to link them all together. And that's how my brain works. So thank you so much for allowing me to share this. And um, as always, when I share my stories, I am not ready for coaching or advice or anything like that. So if you want to offer any advice, please don't because I'm still processing it and this is just like part of how I operate. I like to share stories of my life because I like being honest and transparent, but it doesn't mean I'm necessarily ready for uh, advice or coaching or anything along those lines because I need my space to process and heal and recover and learn lessons and find them from within. So thank you so much for listening and I will see you next time. Bye.